I'm Connor Gasquay, Media Relations Coordinator here at Children's of Alabama, joined by Dr. Aaron Shaughnessy, Director of Pediatric Hospital Medicine at Children's of Alabama. Today, we're talking about treatment options for children with COVID-19. Dr. Shaughnessy, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So let's start off with, uh, I, I guess, one of the you know good things about this situation is uh, there are a lot of children who test positive for COVID-19, and many of them don't have to be admitted to the hospital. That's correct. For many children, they may not have any symptoms. For some, their symptoms can be easily managed at home. But unfortunately, there are children that do have to be hospitalized. What are some of the indications that a doctor might have that would lead to them to make that decision to keep a child in the hospital? Yes, there's a couple of reasons why children might need hospital level care. Um, the first would be if they're having respiratory issues requiring oxygen therapy or there's a concern they may progress and need um, oxygen therapy. The other indication would be dehydration, which can be common in younger children. So ultimately, some of these patients do have to be hospitalized. And then there is, of course, a process that doctors have to go through in deciding how to treat uh, the symptoms that they're dealing with, how to treat them for COVID-19. I understand there are a couple of drugs that doctors might decide to uh, have children take. Yes, that is true. There are two medications that are really the mainstay of treatment right now for children hospitalized with COVID-19. The first is remdesivir. It is an antiviral medication, and it has been shown in studies of adults to reduce the severity of disease and to get adults out of the hospital sooner. Um, so we are using that in children as well. The other medication is dexamethasone, which is a steroid. And dexamethasone works to try to calm down some of the inflammation that occurs when a child has COVID-19 pneumonia. So is, is this essentially the first option that a doctor might consider uh, as a way to treat a child with COVID-19? You know, some children that are admitted don't actually need those type of medications. They may just need support with IV fluids, for example, if they're having a lot of vomiting and diarrhea and are dehydrated. Um, but those children that are having more severe respiratory symptoms and needing oxygen typically will be treated with those medications. So uh, what about treatments beyond that? I, I think uh, there is an option where they would have to be on, a, on an oxygen tube, I believe. Yes, yeah, so generally when um, children are started on oxygen therapy because their oxygen levels are low, we would deliver the oxygen through a small tube that goes just under the nose. That's called a nasal cannula. Um, and we can do low level oxygen therapy through that device. So let's say you are using that device and it's not as effective uh, as you would like it to be. What's the next step after that? We have a more specialized type of cannula that can deliver oxygen at higher flows. That's called high flow nasal cannula. Um, beyond that, there's other types of um, respiratory support, including positive pressure and devices like BiPAP or CPAP. Um, if children continue to progress, if they're really ill with their respiratory um, disease, they may need ICU level care where they might be placed on a ventilator. You, you know, we hear a lot about ventilators and about uh, patients, whether it's adults or children being placed on ventilators. Um, is that essentially an indication that uh, it, it's a pretty serious situation uh, with COVID-19 if they are placed on a ventilator? It is. Those are, those are some of the sickest children that have COVID-19 would need that level of therapy. But then there is something beyond ventilators uh, for children who I guess are even sicker than that. Uh, ECMO uh, is something that you don't hear about quite as often as ventilators. Uh, what exactly is ECMO for people who are not familiar with it? Yes, ECMO is an acronym. It stands for Extracorporeal Membrane Oxygenation. And essentially, it is a fancy technology that can bypass the lungs. So special cannulas are placed in the blood vessels so that blood goes to the ECMO machine where oxygen is delivered to the blood, carbon dioxide is taken away, and then the blood is sent back to the patient. So these are uh, certainly some of the options that are out there that are available uh, for children to be treated with COVID-19. Uh, and, and this is, you know, essentially what happens once they're in the hospital. But I guess the more important part is really to try to prevent getting COVID-19 in the first place. Absolutely. Um, prevention is really 
the, the key take home message here, we don't want any children sick with COVID-19. We have very effective vaccines and we encourage everyone who is eligible to get a vaccine to go ahead and get one. So that's all children over the age of 12 and all family members around children who are too young to be vaccinated should also receive vaccines to protect those kids. Um, the other mainstays of prevention include masks, particularly in indoor settings. So we highly recommend continuing to wear those masks so that we can protect our loved ones, including young children. And, and I guess it's not just about uh, keeping yourself safe, but it's about keeping others around you safe as well. Absolutely. And at this point, I can't stress enough, our children are relying on us to make good decisions and keep them safe. So once again, there are uh, options available for treatment if a child uh, is in the hospital for COVID-19, uh, but prevention, certainly a, a very important key to making sure that children and adults alike uh, do not get COVID-19 in the first place. Once again, Dr. Erin Shaughnessy, Director of Pediatric Hospital Medicine here at Children's of Alabama. Thanks for your time and thanks so much for watching this segment from Children's of Alabama on COVID-19 treatments.